way too tall now. <laughs> um, I'm going to preface this ne next intro with saying that, of course, the author wrote it, as most of you would assume. Um, so <laughs> the bio is not me judging the writer of the bio. <laughs> Up next, we have Eleanor Eli Moss. Woo! Eleanor Eli Moss is a menace and can be found wandering the internet in a deranged stupor at the handle Fang Honey. That's with two Y's. Please welcome Eleanor Eli Moss. Woo! First time being the only poet on a bill of otherwise fiction writers. That's kind of poetry. Ish. <laughs> <laughs> Should we do that? Such a, such a poet okay, that wasn't true. supposed to be as pretentious as <laughs> <laughs> it came out. I was actually and, in the room. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, don't be. Anyways, if none of this makes sense, that's why. Alright. The Book of Blood. Blood billows from my nose like a gas, like surgery, waffle iron, scuppered ridiculous. Pain moves into me and settles right on down, has family. Pain is living the good life inside of me. I love you. I'm happy for you, I say to my pain. Blood, says my pain. Blood, blood. Best believe my pain looks good. <coughs> My blood is bringing sexy back, baby. <laughs> That's right. I'm showing it off in the street, looking fine as hell. That's some good looking blood, people say, as they step over my body. I could be a star someday, people say. My blood could make me great, so I am told. Oh boy. I kiss their bloody knuckles and say thank you. My blood does not beg forgiveness, nor ask permission. It spills when spilt and seen. And now it seems I am harboring fugitives, in my blood, that is. My blood is a harbor for fugitives. Dirty hands, a rattlesnake, the children, several poets. I open my neck and name myself sanctuary in a single stroke. Will that ever be enough? No, shut up, don't answer. I was asking myself. Oh, oh, I saw the blood. I tweeted about it. <laughs> I took pictures. This is important, I said. Now cut to a commercial break and clean yourself up. Broken butterfly bonanza. Slob hobbling extradition. The goopy avenger. <laughs> Supper time Molotov jubilee. Blood, 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 blood. Why on earth would I pretend it doesn't hurt? I don't know, but that's what I'm doing. I need someone to explain this to me. I need to know if I am wrong. It's okay if I am wrong, but I would hate to be wrong and not know it. I would hate to miss out on my own bleeding. I am a stutter of happiness inside a smothering, vaporous pulse. I break my own neck just to deny the pleasure from anyone else. Then I sit there in my own middling, vomit up my doubting and catch it in my mouth, swallow it back down like a good girl, wearing my own dried blood like the gaudiest of jewels. Darling, I'm a dire warning so fashionable that none of you even deserve me, but here's my head on a pike regardless. The blood in my smile says hello. It's trash. The body is trash, and so I wave my cardboard sign around. Won't you please come touch my blood-filled trash? I am reevaluating what enters me. I am turning my head the whole way around like a watchtower. I love you. Pick me up from the blood-covered ground. I would like to try new things. going to read one more. Um, both of these are as yet unpublished passages from my new poetry newsletter. 
which emails me poems every Sunday. If you want to be a part of that, come talk to me and give me your email address, and I will add you to the email list. Because I am gracious and benevolent. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also have chapbooks for sale on the table back there, which are absolutely nothing like what I am reading tonight. <laughs> <laughs> the Book of Love. There's always a knife just lying around. The space between your hand and the edge of the table. The space between the edge of the table and your tender skull. I love you. My heart has a set of simple rules. Step one, say goodbye. Step two, say goodbye. There is always a person named Julie wandering around in my heart. <laughs> my heart is always moonlighting as a coffee. I wish Julie was here. <laughs> anyway, sorry. My heart needs some quick cash now. Just look at these dirty hands, says my heart. Wow, says Julie. Come on, you know I'm good for it, says my heart. But Julie knows that actually my heart is not good for it. Everyone knows that my heart is not good for it. Everyone knows that I love you. Goodbye. Time spent pulling my heart behind me in a wagon as it slowly fills up with falling leaves. This is real big Cancer Moon energy. <laughs> Once I was in love, but they walked into the sea, and all I had left was this anecdote. That's no way to run a business. <laughs> Once I kissed someone's lips and got a security alert on my phone. Suspicious activity. Was this you? A love unashamed of itself must be coming. A love unashamed of itself must be shown the way. My heart is never too good for a little bit of nonsense once in a while. Running up and up the aisle taking on too much freight, despite my sincerest wishes. I would not object to someone giving my heart a little card, a small something, with baby bears on the front, maybe, or decommissioned missiles. Appreciate, it might read, or might not read. I would not object either way. I have never been crushed beneath the unshorn hoof of my heart's wrongdoing, but there's still time. I love you. There is always time. I am just over in the corner, playing Twister underneath the bisexual lighting. <laughs> I am not above reproach. Yes, despite looking so touchable, I know. I guess I will stop when it makes sense to stop. Or perhaps maybe not. Click to find out. My heart dissolves into mush upon hearing that a violin is near. I have to carry it home and take off its coat and tuck it into bed all by myself. But how can I not? My heart is my favorite idiot, for better or for worse. Besides, I've fallen off that mountain. I keep leaving my keys in the door of my heart and reliving my entire day in a panic. I keep remembering things that have nothing to do with anything. Upon having an emotional breakthrough, I beat my heart to death in celebration. I love you, I love you. I did one thing, one time, when I was seven years old and defined the rest of my stupid life. Get out of here. And I suppose you'd have me believe I've been capable of both great love and great destruction this entire time. You're telling me I am whole and certain and complete and I'm just supposed to be okay with that? Fine. 